Hi everyone! I hope you're all doing well. Today we're starting Module 5, which is all about something called the mole and something else called stoichiometry. So in this module, we're just covering sections of Chapter 7, so 7.4 to 7.9. All right, so Chapter 7, we've already looked at different types of chemical reactions. Uh, so in a previous module, now we're going to look at quantities within those chemical reactions. So for instance, um, how much of a reactant do we have and how much product will we end up with? So we're going to start by talking about something called the mole, and this is not the animal. Um, this is a quantity. So the mole is actually similar to a dozen, which equals 12, or a gross, which equals 144, or a ream, which equals 500. So these different terms are used to count objects. So for instance, if you have a dozen eggs, you know that you have 12 eggs. If you have a ream of paper, you have 500 sheets of paper. Or if you have a gross of pencils, that means you have 144 pencils. So um, we're going to use the mole in a similar way. So the mole is also called Avogadro's number. All right. Now, Avogadro's number is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd items. So this could be anything that you want to count. Now, typically, we're going to use this number to count atoms, molecules, or ions, um, because that's really the only situation in which we would have this many items. Um, so for instance, we're never going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pencils. <laughs> so anyway, one mole is just equal to Avogadro's number of items, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd items. And again, this is a huge number of items, so if we actually write out that number, that's a lot of zeros. Now, Avogadro's number is named for an Italian physicist named Amadeo Avogadro. Um, he didn't actually come up with this exact number, but he came up with the concept. Um, so it's named after him. Okay, so now if we apply this to atoms or elements or molecules, um, we can say that if you have one mole of an element, that means you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element. Or if you have one mole of carbon, so if we're specifically talking about carbon, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Or if we're talking about a mole of sodium, in that one mole of sodium we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. Now I added some fun examples down below. So if we had a mole of pencils, then that means we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pencils. Uh, so maybe that's in like a warehouse somewhere. Uh, if you have one mole of cats, that means you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd cats. So this is exactly the same as saying, oh, I have a dozen cats, I have 12 cats or I have a dozen pencils, I have 12 pencils. Um, so you can really use Avogadro's number to count anything. Um, and if you have exactly 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, that means you have one mole. Now notice that we ha do have an equality here so we can turn that equality into conversion factors. So in this equality, 
Uh, we've put in the word particles, but you could replace that with whatever you're counting. So again, that could be pencils or cats or atoms of carbon. Um, but just for this example, we put particles there. So we can write this in two different ways. We could put a mole on the uh, numerator and then we'll put Avogadro's number in the denominator. Or we could put Avogadro's number in the numerator and one mole in the denominator. So now we can convert between um, moles and particles, or maybe moles and atoms, or moles and ions. It just depends on what we're counting. So let's do an example problem and we're going to use Avogadro's number to solve this problem. Okay, so Avogadro's number is used to convert moles of a substance to particles. So how many CO2 molecules are in 0.5 moles of CO2? So off to the side, we have a picture of CO2, which is dry ice. And we're just trying to figure out, okay, if I have half a mole of CO2, how many CO2 molecules are in that amount? Okay. So the first step is to write a plan. So we're going to convert moles of CO2 to molecules of CO2 using Avogadro's number. So again, Avogadro's number can be written in two different ways. So we could put one mole of CO2 in the numerator or in the denominator, and then Avogadro's number would go in the other spot. Now, in this case, we want to convert two molecules of CO2. So we probably want to use this conversion factor because we're trying to end up with molecules and get rid of moles. All right, and then we set up our problem. So we'll start with our 0.5 moles of CO2, and then we'll multiply that by our conversion factor, where Avogadro's number is in the numerator, and we'll follow that with our unit of molecules of CO2. And then we'll put one mole of CO2 in the denominator. So then moles of CO2 cancel. And then all we have to do is multiply 0.5 by Avogadro's number. And we'll get our answer. So in half a mole of CO2, we have 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. So this is really similar to, um, let's say we had half a dozen. So 0 0.5 dozen eggs. How many eggs is that? So we know that one dozen equals 12 eggs. So then we could say, all right, we've got 0 0.5 dozen times 12 eggs over one dozen, and that would give us six eggs. So it's very similar to that concept of a dozen, um, but this time we're just thinking about a huge amount of atoms or molecules or whatever we're counting. All right, so let's do a learning check. So the number of atoms in two moles of aluminum is, and we're given a few options. So either A, two aluminum atoms, B, three times 10 to the 23rd aluminum atoms, or C, 1.2 times 10 to the 24th aluminum atoms. So if you wanna pause the video and try this on your own first, you can, and then we'll do it together. Okay, so we're given that we have two moles of aluminum. 
All right, and then we want to figure out how many atoms is in that sample. So again, we're going to use Avogadro's number. So again, remember that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever we're counting. So in this case, we're counting atoms of aluminum. All right, so looking at that equality up above, do we want to put one mole in the numerator of our conversion factor or in the denominator of the conversion factor? So we want to cancel units of moles, right? So we're going to put one mole in the denominator. And then we'll put our atoms in the numerator. And we can also put in aluminum here just to make it clear what we're calculating. Okay, so then moles of aluminum will cancel and our final unit will be atoms of aluminum. So all we have to do is multiply two by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so if we plug that into our calculator, we should get 1.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of aluminum. Okay. Now, if you did not get that answer, um, make sure you're plugging things in correctly into your calculator. Um, so you could type in 6.02 times 10 caret symbol 23, or you could also use that E function. So you might have to hit your shift or second key and then the E button. So either way, that should give you Avogadro's number. But just double check that you got the same answer because if you're doing this on a test, I don't want you to accidentally get the wrong answer just because of your calculator. Okay. And then here are the solution slides. Now let's do another problem. Let's say we're trying to figure out the number of moles of sulfur, and we're told that we have 1.8 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sulfur. Okay, so we have a few options here. Either A, we have one mole of sulfur atoms, B, we have three moles of sulfur atoms, or C, we have 1.1 times 10 to the 48th moles of sulfur atoms. Okay, so this time we're starting with the number of atoms and we're trying to get to moles. So let's set up our problem. All right, and then remember one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or whatever we're counting, but in this case, it's atoms. Okay, so in our conversion factor, uh, where should we put one mole? Should we put that in the numerator or the denominator? So we should put it in the numerator because we're trying to figure out how many moles we have. And we want to cancel atoms. So we want to get rid of the unit of atoms. So we'll put Avogadro's number down below. Okay. So the unit of atoms will cancel and our final unit will be mole. So what we're going to do is multiply 1.8 times 10 to the 20, or uh, sorry, divide 1.8 times 10 to the 24th 
by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So when you're putting this into your calculator, what I recommend is putting parentheses around everything. So for instance, I might enter this as 1.8 e to the 24th divided by 6.02 e to the 23rd. Or if you're using the caret symbol, this is where parentheses are really important. So 1.8 times parentheses 10 to the 24th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, because otherwise your calculator might assume, uh, for instance, that you are dividing 1.8 times 10 to the 24th by 6.02, and then you're multiplying the whole thing by 10 to the 23rd. So that's kind of what we're trying to avoid when we're entering stuff into our calculator. Okay. Now, when we put that into our calculator, we should get an answer of three moles of sulfur atoms. All right. And just make sure you get the same answer. So make sure you're entering everything into your calculator uh, correctly so that it knows what you want to do because, again, calculators aren't as smart as we think they are. They're not telepathic, unfortunately. All right. So just some simple dimensional analysis, but we're just using a super large number. Okay. So now let's talk about moles of elements in a chemical compound. And we're going to discuss um, the compound aspirin. So aspirin is a pretty common um, pain reliever um, and its chemical formula is C9H8O4. So that means in one compound of aspirin, we have nine carbons, eight hydrogens, and four oxygens. So you can see that here. So now if we have um, one molecule of aspirin, again, we have nine atoms of carbon, eight atoms of hydrogen, and four atoms of oxygen. But we can say this in another way too. We could say that in one mole of aspirin, we have nine moles of carbon, eight moles of hydrogen, and four moles of oxygen. So now we're starting to think about ratios between each individual atom in this one molecule. And we can use that to our advantage. So for instance, let's say we're trying to figure out how many carbon atoms we have in one mole of aspirin. So we can use molar ratios or Avogadro's number to figure that out. So for instance, we can write different conversion factors for all of these equalities. So for one mole of aspirin, we could write that we have nine moles of carbon for every one mole of aspirin. We have eight moles of hydrogen for every one mole of aspirin, or four moles of oxygen for every one mole of aspirin. And of course, you can flip all of those conversion factors so notice that uh, down below, we just have the opposite, where one mole of aspirin is in the numerator. All right. So let's do a practice problem. How many atoms of oxygen are in 0.15 moles of aspirin? Okay, so this one's a little tricky, so we'll go over this one together but we're going to utilize those ratios, so the subscripts in the molecular formula, and we're also going to utilize Avogadro's number. So let's write what we're given. 
So we're told that we have 0 0.15 moles of C9H8O4 aspirin. And we need to determine how many atoms of oxygen are in that amount of aspirin. Okay, so first, what we need to do is figure out, all right, so we have 0.15 moles of aspirin. How many moles of oxygen do we have? And then we can go to atoms of oxygen. So we're going to convert um, moles of aspirin to moles of oxygen. So that's step one. And then step two, we're going to convert moles of oxygen to atoms of oxygen. So let's set this problem up. So step one, I'll use a different color here. We're going to convert 0.15 moles of aspirin to moles of oxygen. Okay, so how many moles of oxygen are in one mole of aspirin? Well, if we go back, we can see that there are four moles of oxygen for every one mole of aspirin. And that's just shown in the subscript there. So there's four moles of oxygen. So do we want uh, four moles of oxygen to be in the numerator or in the denominator? So let's go back to our problem. So we want four moles of oxygen to be in the numerator because that's what we're trying to solve for is moles of oxygen. And then in the denominator, we'll just put one mole of C9H8O4. Okay, so then that equals, let's see, let me pull out my calculator here. 0.15 times four, that is 0 0.15. Six, and I'm going to add a couple of placeholder zeros there to give it three sig figs. Okay, so that is how many moles of oxygen we have. All right, so now in step two, we're going to start with that value and we're going to convert that to atoms of oxygen. So this is where Avogadro's number comes in. So remember, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So do we want to put one mole in the numerator or the denominator? The denominator, because we want to get rid of, whoa, <laughs> I zoomed in. Uh, we want to get rid of moles of oxygen, and that's equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. Okay, so let's plug that into our calculators. So 0 0.6 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so we get 3.61 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. All right. So this problem involved two different steps. Um, first, we started with a certain amount of aspirin, and we had to figure out uh, how many moles of oxygen are in that sample of aspirin. Uh, and then we could figure out how many atoms of oxygen we had. So unfortunately, we weren't able to just jump from moles of aspirin to atoms of oxygen. Uh, 
uh, we had to ha look at the ratio of oxygen to aspirin first before we could move on to our Avogadro's number calculation. All right, and it's okay if this is confusing right now. Um, so this is what we call um, dimensional analysis. So we've done this before, but sometimes figuring out moles is a little tricky because they're really abstract. Um, I remember in high school, I, that was the first time I learned about moles and I had no clue what they were. I was very, very confused. But once I did more practice problems, I started to kind of get it. And then I don't think it was until college that I fully understood it. So don't, don't feel bad if this is really confusing right now. So um, if you do ever get confused about moles, go back to that dozen example. Just remember that it's very similar to one dozen equals 12. Okay, and here's the solution slides. So next time we're going to talk about something called molar mass. And molar mass is super useful because now we'll, we'll be able to convert between moles and mass. So we'll talk about that next time. Um, but again, if you are confused about moles, um, I did post a few videos um, from Tyler DeWitt and uh, other resources under modules week five. Um, so make sure to go check those out because that will help, or sorry, week uh, six, that will help a lot with um, understanding moles as well. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.